wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Did you know it's biblical to sing together like we just did? That's biblical. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's biblical to worship together like we did earlier. Can I get another amen? Amen. So uh, whether it's music or no music, it's biblical for us to sing and make melody in our hearts together to the Lord. What about years ago when they didn't have instruments? I mean, does anybody know that, did anybody, does anybody know if anybody even lived 30 years ago? Come on, y'all. Without Google and phones in our hand, but we worshiped God, or you did, uh, from our heart. Amen? So uh, I thought that was great. Beautiful, beautiful. Give her another hand. So last week we had Lindsay's mom and dad with us, and they did a great job here in delivering what they felt God uh, had for us as a people. And this week, uh, I'm glad to be back uh, preaching. I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter, please. Exodus chapter 16. And I want to share with you today, and I just um, have a quick thought about four, five, six days ago, maybe, give or take. This rose up in my heart. I've never preached it before, but I want to preach it today. And I want to talk to you about uh, hunger levels, hunger pains, uh, hunger games, if you will. I want to talk to you about the subject uh, of, of drive and appetite and desire and hunger. What is hunger? And I want to show you uh, the importance of guiding and allowing yourself to be fed by God and how to produce a hunger. Now, if you're saved, listen to me right now. There, When you get saved, you have this thing rise up in you where you're really hungry for the things of God and then you, you grow a little bit in God and that kind of fades. Even if you're lost and you say, I don't need God, don't want God, if you're watching via streaming and you're just not interested in any of that, everybody has hunger. Everybody has appetite. I'm going to show you what human desire actually is. And the people that you have to be concerned about are not the people who have too much drive. It's the people who don't have any passion at all. Those are the people that will kill you. They're they're real reserved and don't seem to be quite involved in anything, sort of uh, overly aloof in life. Those are the people that ought to concern you. But Simon Peter had a lot of passion. Uh, It was misguided. Judas had a lot of passion. It was twisted. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. We all have drive, human appetite. Exodus 16, verse number 1. If you're there, say, I'm there. All right, you ready for the word today? All right, give me your permission to teach and preach for a few minutes. Is that okay? I'm going to do it whether you want me to or not. Is that all right? Verse 1, they took their journey from Elam. The whole congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin. How many have ever been to the wilderness of sin? Not living right, but, but not in Egypt, just stuck in the wilderness. Uh, they came to this wilderness on the, on the 15th day of the second month, two and a half months after leaving the land of Egypt as slaves. Verse 2, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured, complained, chided, griped against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Boy, oh boy, when you start that whining thing, watch what happens. The children of Israel said unto them, listen to verse 3, very critical. I won't hold you long today. Look at this with me, verse 3. The children of Israel said to them, would to God we had died. I wish we would have died even if it was from the hand of the Lord. I wished I would have died. Listen to that. In the land of Egypt, when we sat by the grill, the flesh pots, the buffet line is what that is. We did eat bread to the full, but you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, listen to how merciful God is. He could have killed them, but he said, behold... I will rain bread from heaven for you. I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out. All you got to do, listen to this, is go out of your tent and pick it up. 
That's all you've got to do. You don't have to build a ladder to heaven to get the bread. It's going to fall on your kneecaps. It's going to fall right outside of your tent, right be between your toes. And you will gather a certain amount as much as you need. I want you to go down to verse number um, 8. Moses said, This shall be the Lord will give you evening in the evening flesh to eat. That was quails. Quails were going to fall out of the sky in the evening and manna or bread in the morning. Verse 12, I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. At evening time you'll eat quail flesh and in the morning you'll be filled with bread. You'll know that I am the Lord your God. It came to pass, verse 13, in the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew laid round about the host. And the Bible says... Um, verse 15, the children of Israel said to one another, it is manna or manu, meaning what is it? That's how it got its name. Vanilla wafers basically is what it was. Verse number, uh, da -da -da, verse number, uh, let's go down to verse number, thirty-one. The house of Israel called it manna. And said it was like coriander seed white. It tasted like wafers. I told you, made with honey. Come on, somebody. I'm not crazy. Yellow box, vanilla wafers. Moses said, this is the thing the Lord's commanded. Feel as much as you need, he said in verse number 32. Go down to verse 35. Very important, will be done. Amen, baby. Verse 35. The children of Israel did eat manna how long? Forty years. Can you imagine eating vanilla wafers every day for 40 years? Until they came to a land inhabited, they did eat manna. Until they came into the borders of Canaan, which was the promised land. Some gathered much, some gathered little, but everybody was full. Lord, today, anoint this word with great power. May this be a beautiful surgery. Feed us. Raise and change our hunger levels today. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. They had quails in the evening and bread in the morning, enough to supply millions of people. The meat, the, the quail that fell was temporary. You don't read that birds fell every day. The quail came periodically. You don't read about it. But the bread that fell was indefinite. The meat was temporary, but the bread lasted 40 years. I said the meat was temporary, but the bread was 40 years, for 40 years. Now, that's over 12,000 days of miracles. If you go by our calendar, that's 14,600 days on a Western calendar. They were fed every day except the Sabbath. So if you take 40 uh, years times 52 weeks, one Sabbath a week, and you do the math and take that from 14,000, you probably are looking at about 12,000, 12,500 days Every day, a miracle for 12,000 days. A group of people that had come out of Egypt that were a mixed multitude, not just Jews, not just white people, black people, brown people, all type of people, that came out of Jews uh, in Egypt as a, a delivered people. They came out under the blood, but they were living under a 40-year curse, a journey that would have only taken a few months turned into 40 years years, 38 and a half of those years doing a gerbil on a wheel at Kadesh Barnea until they would cross over Jordan and take Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and they would claim all those inhabited cities you call the promised land, which is now, of course, the state or the nation rather of Israel. But they were under a 40 year curse. Why? Because of murmuring and complaining and unbelief. Unbelief will send you to hell. Unbelief is a sin. Unbelief and unwillingness to obey brought a curse upon the entire generation. So that entire generation died and their children and grandchildren under the leadership of Joshua claimed the land. Yet, under a um, generation of curse, they received the mercy of God by 12,000 days of miracles every single day. They were slaves in Egypt. 
And in verse 3, which I enunciated earlier for you, they said these words, listen to this and see if it reminds you of yourself on any given day of your week, of your life, on any normal life that has ups and has downs. They said these words, I wished I would have never come out of Egypt. These were people that had their backs beaten. Some even believe they built the pyramids. These were people that were, had to pump a foot pump to get water from the river. I'm going to preach now. No AC. No internet. Help me preach this sermonette. Slaves bludgeoned so much so that they cried to God under the tyranny of Pharaoh. And here they are with their chest out, we've all done this, making dumb statements. Come on, y'all. You get a flat tire. I never should have paid my tithes. Did you just say what I think you said? You used to not have a car. Now you got a car. Now you whining about a tire. You still got three that are inflated. Come on, y'all. We never praise God for the other three. We only complain about the one with the leak in it. They were slaves. D listen, have you ever met somebody content with slavery? Oh, God. Never come into agreement with bondage. It's God's will to set you free three ways. Spirit, soul, and body. God will never agree with any level of slavery in your life. Jesus died spirit, soul, and body to completely set you free. If any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the righteous judge. He said, I'll, if you confess your sins... He'll forgive us and cleanse us. God wants you free in every area of your life. Can I get an amen? Well, the other day I went in TJ Maxx and I had my kids with me, so I was shopping on the fly. And so uh, I was looking for a t-shirt and I picked up a bottle of cologne and I put it in my pocket because I had to answer my phone. I go out to my car, I realize I've got this bottle of cologne in my pocket. So I realized, you know what, I'm not a thief. Come on, y'all. So I turned around for a $6.99 bottle of cologne and I went back in there and I said, excuse me, ma'am, this was in my pocket. And she looked at me like this and said, I promise you, I'm not trying to steal a $6 cologne bottle and I brought it back. Because God, I'm, there, there ought to be nothing in your life connected to the old you. God's will is to disconnect you from where you were. So they said, listen, uh, they said, we wish we, we wish we would have just died in Egypt. Wait, 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 why though? Because at least we were eating two inch steaks per night. Garlic and onions, baked potatoes with cheese. We didn't have to eat this dry Sunday morning bread. We had Friday night, come on y'all, biscuits and gravy. They have the audacity to look at God who delivers them and say, over there in Egypt, man, it was golden corral. It was your finger licking good. But now you, listen to the words, you brought us into this wilderness to starve us with hunger. I'd like to say, oh, the bondage of freedom. They're free, but they have just put themselves in bondage through murmuring, whining, and complaining. Now, we're not a church that murmurs, whines, and complains, so I don't have to take 45, 46 next minutes and describe to you why you ought not murmur, whine, and complain. We're not a church that complains. Can I get a decent amen? I said, we're not a church that complains. Complaining will get you nowhere in God. Amen? If you start complaining, you will attract demonic entities into your life. I'm going to preach today on how good enough is not good enough. God has set in your life and he'll give you the itchies like poison ivy for blankets when you settle for what's good and when God has something better for you. It ought to irritate you to be around people that settle for the Egyptian meat when you could have the fruit of the promised land. 
I'm sorry. That's just how life works. I ain't nobody going to help me. I'm just, woe is me. No, if you get up and go out of your tent, manna will be at your front door. But God's not going to put it in the microwave for you. All you got to do is get up, walk out of your tent, and bread and meat is sitting on your front porch. Yet in disobedience, disobedience, these people are, God still makes sure they're fat, full, and fine. That's called mercy, shout. That's called mercy right there. Man, the meat don't last, but the bread sure does. 2,000 weeks in a row, 2,080 to be exact, God gave them a miracle of manna every day for 40 years, and this is what I call the manna season. Now, by the way, this is not all they would eat. They ate manna. They ate milk. They ate the meat from the sacrifices. They, of course, had water. They ate quail. There were many things, but every day, God sent them a reminder of the token of His his providence and his supernatural ability to spread a table in the wilderness. Hunger is an incredible thing. The incredible human body designed by God. You uh, woke up at uh, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. You couldn't get breakfast. Now it's 11.30. It's 12 o'clock. And you say things in your brain that comes out your mouth. You say, oh dear God, Lord, have mercy. I'm starving to death. And you see food walk by. And it's, you, you don't, and it's lunchtime. And it's not that you're hungry. It's just 12 o'clock. Come on, y'all. So it's time to eat. And your brain's says you need to eat and so you licking your lips but something happens at lunch and you couldn't get lunch so now it's three o'clock and you got a headache so you're like oh I got a headache I got to eat something and then you got busy again and now it's five o'clock in the afternoon and you pull into your favorite barbecue joint and you say to yourself, self, and he says what? And you say, we're about to go downtown, baby. And self says, now don't do me this way. And you say to yourself, you shut up. Get behind me, devil. And you go in there and you're looking at the menu. And normally you'd get a number three. But today you're going to get a number five. Because back at 12 o'clock you would have got a number three. But now it's five o'clock in the evening. And you re- you starve into death. You don't care about Ethiopian children right now. Because you're looking at a screen and you're going, I got, I got enough to get that. Go ahead and put that make it big too and come on somebody and it's because it's five o'clock and now your stomach's eating the surrounding components of the body and you're starving so you eat till you cannot breathe and you walk out sideways help me preach they roll you out I've got an invention put beds at the foyer of restaurants and charge ten bucks for ten minutes because people walk in I'm starving they walk out I can't breathe you you would tie your shoes but you'd mess your pants up you can't even bend down you're so full and you say and self says to you I knew it I told you not to do this and you say shut up and self says to you don't you ever do me this way again you say I promise you I'll never do this again and you say I don't even need to eat till tomorrow but that night Before you go to sleep, there's some cinnamon toast crunch in that left cabinet, and you go and you, it's just a midnight snack, and wonder why you can't breathe on Monday. Free, you're welcome. The incredible body that can eat and just eat and then four hours later, and especially if you got children, I get a hallelujah right there. I'm hungry. I hadn't eaten in 12 minutes. Come on, y'all. I'm starving. How many parents can help me? You just ate. The incredible human machine called the body. Some of you women know men that are never full. I mean, you you just eat all the time. Don't look around. Don't look around. Everybody shout hunger. Now let's do it together. Hunger. Think about it a second. It's the ultimate silhouette of life. Somebody says, "Oh, oh, I'm not hungry. Yeah, you are. You're hungry to not be hungry. That's like saying, I ain't got no pride. That's pride not having any. I ain't got, I'm, 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 I'm the most humble man you know, pride. That's pride and not fact, the fact you don't think you have any. Everybody has pride. It's keeping your compassion level higher than your pride level. When your pride level exceeds your compassion level, God will put you in a storm to bring your compassion level back up and suction your pride level down. 
God will put you in surgery to hurt you, to heal you, so you can have empathy and sympathy and grace for somebody who's going through something. Prior to that, you didn't care. Can I, have a, can I get an amen there? Prior to that, it didn't matter to you at all. But if you're in the hospital, all of a sudden you're like, my God, I, I need to care more about people in the hospital. Hunger is incredible. Say it again, hunger. Things people are hungry for. Wealth, health. A lady this week who was a billionaire killed herself. Another gentleman, 61 years old, very famous with a show, takes his own life. We, they don't know why on, on Miss Spade's situation. They don't know why. Hunger. Some people say, oh, I'm not hungry at all. There's a drive somewhere. Appetite. Human desire. Listen to this statement. 10% or less of the will of God is achieved through human hunger. Let me explain. You will get very little, you will gain very little distance in God by trying to convince God, you ready? That your human desire alone is what He ought to take care of. In other words, I want, I think, I feel, so Lord, you need to do this. All Israel had to do is walk out of their tent door and they could get three quarts and one pint. Every day they could feed, some gathered more, some gathered less. Read the whole chapter. But they had it made. But listen to me. Less than 10% of what you can achieve will accomplish the will of God. Listen to me. 90%, you ready, of the will of God is you doing the most simple act of obedience. Let me help you. 90% of the joy in your life is not going to come by you reading nine more books on joy, but by you simply obeying God in the little areas that God sets up for you. Sl just little obedience can bring great joy. All they had to do, you ready? Wake up, walk out of the tent, and collect the bread. God said, I'll bake it. I'm going to preach now. I'll put some honey in it. Come on, y'all. I'll make it sweet. I I'll, I'll drop it at the doorstep. But you've got to pick it up. People that take no responsibility, well, God's going to do it all. Well, if you're waiting on a supernatural angel, good luck with that. God has given you natural, I got rights, I got rights. You got a responsibility too. We don't talk about that though. They just had to walk out the front door. Magic. 90% of doing God's will is just you doing your 10% part. <laughs> hunger. Say it again, hunger. It's wicked at its base. Let me explain. Let me just slow down a second and teach this to you. Is, that okay? is this okay? It's wicked at its base. Let me explain. A human hunger is stronger than reason. <sighs> I don't know why I did what I did. Oh, it's a crime of passion. You ever seen somebody get so angry in like a drunken rage and it's 50% anger and 50% liquor? And they wake up and go, oh, what, what happened last night? Oh, uh, you shot the sheriff. <laughs> I did? Because human drive is stronger than reason. Hey, man, let's go jump in the river. I, we probably shouldn't. You can't swim. I don't care. Human hunger is stronger than logic. Wait. You take that little two by three card and logic gets in your brain and says, don't swipe it. But you see a pair of shoes and you swipe it because human hunger is stronger than logic. You can sit down and read conventional books on conventional wisdom. It won't make you any more smarter if you don't get up and apply what it says. 
Hunger is the ultimate silhouette of eternity. We're all longing for something deeper that is within us. We all dream. Oh, oh, what, what, what? You don't dream. Get real. Everybody dreams a little bit of things being a little bit better. Someday, one of these days, I call it destination disease. One of these days, I tell you, when I get 50, you ain't going to do what you, because you may not live to be 50. Here you are getting against God. That's, that's, that's not faith. The Bible says, if tomorrow even comes, we ought to pray. Pray the will of God. If there is, today is what you've been promised. Tomorrow is not a guarantee. Right now is cash in hand. Yesterday's a cash check or a bounce check. Come on, y'all. But right now is cash in hand. All you're promised is today. And there's something in you that says, one of these days, look at me, someday is today. Someday, someday is right now. It's right now. I'm going to own my own home. You better start now. One of these days, boy, I'm going to have a business. You better start now. Or your business will be over. It'll be expired. Well, you know, we're going to have kids one day. You better start now. We all desire to reach a little further. Drive a little further. Oh, not me. Okay, why do you go to work? Well, i got to pay the bills. Well, of course, because you have a drive for a roof over your head and a dry blanket at night. Three current things the world will offer you. Number one, the lust of the flesh. Whew, I wished I had what they have. You mean debt? Whoo, the lust of the eye. Man, look at him as a husband. I wished I had him. Boy, he's a sugar daddy. I, he beats his wife. You want that too? Oh, I wished I had her. Look at her hips, lips, and fingertips. There's more to her than that. The lust of the eye and the pride of life. That's all the world can offer you. Watch this. Notice in the temptation of Christ, he has not eaten in 40 days. You ready? Comma. And afterward, the devil came unto him and tempted him. Afterward, he did hunger. Listen, let's just get real a second. Can you just imagine not eating or drinking any substance for 40 days, being in a one-on-one -on -one contest with Lucifer himself, a fallen angel who's tempted you for 40 days, drug all the life out of you, and you walk out of that 40 days, and the first thing he says to you is, Hey, you hungry? I went on a 10-day fast one time, and I woke up pulling my pillow out of my mouth thinking it was a marshmallow. And on the 10th day, she cooked spaghetti and meatballs. Come on, y'all. I broke my fast. This, that's all the world can offer. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Those are the three things Jesus encountered in his temptation. Are you still with me? The world says, I want, I need, I think, I feel. All this appeases and appeals to the soul. Oh, the danger of misguided human desire. Oh, the destruction of human hunger gone wrong. The horrible, depraved condition that you've eaten until you're full. Let's have an honesty challenge. How many of you have eaten of this world before until you are full? Raise your hands. Come on. I'm raising mine. If you can get your foot over your head, that'll be acceptable too. I have eaten of this world until I'm full and yet find myself devoid, empty, and hollow. Because it never lasts. Whoo! Preaching good. It never lasts. Keep getting this world, man. Keep sucking through that straw of this world. It will never satisfy you. Here's my sermon right here. There's a scripture. I'm going to give you time, Miss Pam, to look it up. It's in Joshua 5. And it's Joshua chapter 5, um, and it's verse number, it's verse number 
12. Joshua chapter 5, verse 12. I want to show you what, what happens to this manna season. Why she's finding it. Um, let me ask you a quick question. Let, let's, let's take a break here. How many of you have ever experienced what I call a manna season? Might be best if I explain it. Where, man, bread was just falling. You were just like, my God, like this is wonderful. Uh, maybe this will last. Maybe I can do nothing and this will last. <laughs> well, you can't do nothing and get something. You got to do your 10%. Come on. You got to walk out of the tent to get the bread and the meat, right? The meat won't last, the bread will. Heaven and earth will pass away. This bread book will last forever. It's 66 loaves of bread. It'll last. It's buttered, flavored, and it'll, it'll nourish you. Some parts of it is the end crust. It's, it's, it's tough, but if you digest, it'll heal you. If I don't read the Bible for a couple of days, my wife will say, you grouchy. I hadn't had no bread. I preached a sermon at our old location. I'll preach it again here. I almost did today. I hadn't preached it, but one time I brought in a jug of clear milk. Does anybody remember this? Clear milk, clear water, and bread. I had loaves of bread, and I had, clear, I had milk, and I had water. And then I, I tainted all the, the, the good milk, and then there was spoiled milk. And I had a jar of water from a pond. I do not have to, I don't have to have an MRI on you to tell me what's wrong with you. I can listen to you talk and I can tell you what type of bread you've been eating. We've had people that walk into this church, they get saved, and for some weird reason, they will get so saved that everybody else ain't saved. They'll get that marching order spirit. And they'll, they'll get so holy they can't recognize Jesus. Oh, I don't worship. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's something we do. We don't get it a lot. It's the minority. I shouldn't make a big deal about it. But they'll come and they'll get so safe. You ever met that person? No. Well, let me just tell you in the Levitical priesthood what you've got to do to be a rabbi. I'm not a rabbi. I'm going to heaven with shalom. Come on, y'all. Can I get an amen? Jesus gets me in the gates. Jesus keeps me in the gates. Wait, wait. But they'll get so holy. And it blows my mind I'm thinking, man, you're outrunning the Spirit of God. You're over here trying to figure out who the four horsemen of the apocalypse are and God just wants you to go out and get a piece of bread off the front porch. You're getting so deep. Oh, and, and, and you get in that Pharisee spirit. When the bread is so small but it's so powerful... The greatest messages you're ever going to hear are not the ones you say, man, you should have been there. It was so deep. And we were swimming in revelation. That's a deception. I'm not saying wisdom is bad. Knowledge puffeth up. Be careful. But what I am saying is the devil would love for you to become a spiritual giant as long as you don't evangelize nobody. Amen. Well, I'm mighty spiritually. But you don't reach out and you have no outreach. You're very faithful, but you're not very fruitful. So it's deep bread. Man, look at this manna. Boy, that was manna from heaven. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, listen. Sometimes the best manna is the smallest manna at the best time, the right time. So to round third base with this, you ready? I got one vanilla wafer I'm going to give you. But this vanilla wafer I'm going to give you is going to be like baby back ribs marinated for two days. I'm going to lay it on your palate. It's just going to fall down your throat. There's a manna season. I love, no, let me help myself. I absolutely love the smell of fresh bread. When things are working out, Come on, help me preach. You paying them tithes and money's rolling in. I mean, not a lot, but it's rolling. <laughs> it's coming, at least. It's not leaving yet. Come on, y'all. None of your kids are sick. You just got a promotion. You're not going to believe it. You got a car. God healed your eyes. You can see you had gout in your feet, but now you're running marathons spiritually. OMG, it's a man of season. 
But if you don't let God change your taste buds, you will be craving manna long after the manna quit dropping. This church is trying to grow, but if you don't grow with it, you'll start complaining. You getting this? That was a manna season. And for 14,000 days... Manna fell like candy. God provided every day. Look at me. But when God's providing, you tend to not get hungry. But there came a day, 40 years goes by. Whoo! Here's a scary but good verse. You ready? And the manna ceased on the morrow, means the next day, after they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna, come on, any more, but they ate, come on, the fruit of the land of Canaan. Here's my whole vanilla wafer in one dose right here. Watch. This has to be the most frustrating thing For the grace of God in my life and in your life. I have you here and you are here. I've got you at 13409 Avenue Great. And you are settling for 666 Avenue Good. I destined for you to eat fruit from a land promised. And you are sitting on a window ledge with one leg in the world and one leg in the church looking back at Egypt dreaming about a steak. When you have fruit in the land and meat in a promised land that your eye cannot even perceive and mind cannot conceive and there are fruit and meat in that land. The Bible says when they came back it took two men, come on y'all, to carry the fruit. Two men with a pole to carry one bushel of fruit what two men with poles carrying there? It was so luscious, and oh my geez, it was an, an incredible uh, surplus. I, I can't help it. Maybe it's God, maybe it's me. But am I by myself when I say what makes me so itchy? I mean, I get itchy and scratchy. Is when you get around a spirit that has settled for good enough. You don't want no better for your family. I'm going to preach whether you yawn or smoke a cigarette right now. I, I, they don't want no better for their family. They don't want to budget their money. They don't want to reach out. They want to drag get on Sunday, get it done. Listen to me, I'm telling you as for me and my house, we're the head and not the tail. We're going up, not down, forward, not back. There ain't nothing in Egypt that I want. I'm going to the promised land. I will not give good for great. If God is saying, Eric, there's more, but you got to get more of him before you get more of it. I'm telling you, why are we settling Don't you give me that good enough spirit. The Holy Spirit will kick us like a rented mule. Don't get in that spirit. Get out of that. Okay, why why though, Pastor? Why isn't my life good enough? Wait, wait, wait. Listen, because you're in a new season trying to use old habits. Your God's offering new wine and you're holding up an old wine skin. Oh. God's looking at you saying, I can make you a brand new you, but you craving the old diet. It won't work. It won't work. It will not work. Why? You cannot change physically digesting the same things. Let's, 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 let's play a little. How many of you in all honesty, like me, you like a cold soda pop? You're a Mountain Dew, Coke, or Pepsi, or diet? That's funny. I'll take diet, more poison. <laughs> Give me the one clothed in diet. 
It, 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 isn't the food industry crazy? Oh, it, it's, it, this is not high fructose corn syrup. This is stevia. It don't matter if it's Beverly. Come on, y'all. This is, this is, this is a sweet uh, sucrose from uh, the Jamaican jungles. Give me a break. Sugar cane, y'all. But how many of you understand that when you quit drinking a carbonated fizz and you start drinking this new stuff they got out called water, brand new off the shelf. You can get it in bottles though. When you start drinking water, all of a sudden you don't have time to talk about other people because you're too busy in the, on the toilet. And then you see these, these, these uh, water heads. Not crack heads, water heads. They got a gallon. They up in the bank with a gallon of water. Come on, somebody. That's me. Drinking that water. Getting that water in you. Come on, y'all. Now, I watch this documentary. All milk is bad. Well, this scriptural. Milk, come on y'all, drink the milk of the Word, scriptural. Somewhere in the Bible it talks about chocolate milk. <laughs> hmm. There's four things the Bible is, meat, bread, water, and milk. All you have to do is listen to a person talk and you can tell what type of bread and milk they've been drinking. <laughs> At holier than thou spirit, I name you publicly four or five ministers in America. I can see one of my people and I say, you've been listening to so and so, hadn't you? You, 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 you got so much of that preacher in you, there ain't nobody good enough for your steeple. But you're going to be what you're eating. You're going to act like what you're drinking. I was listening to Bryant pray earlier, and I thought, man, he can pray better than most people can preach. And I was listening to his prayer language, and I thought, he, he's, he picks up kind of what he's hearing in the house and in his prayer time. You can hear what's in a person by just listening to him. You trying to read yesterday's mail and want God to give you a new season. It won't work. You trying to eat last year's meat and manna going into a promised land. Look at me. That was the manna season. This is the promised land season. You can't look for manna in a new season because that was the season God said, all you got to do, <laughs> what are you going to do is wake up and gather it off the porch and eat. Be happy. But you get in a new season where you do this wonderful thing called growth. Don't you love growth? You hate it while it's happening, but you love it when you see it. Don't you love to look back at the you that you used to be and go, praise God, I ain't that fool. I'm growing. I'm moving. <laughs> this scripture tells me that the manna season was over. Now it was time for a fruit season where they would walk into the land that God had provided. They would eat the meat of the land. Listen, I'm closing. The manna fell from above, but the meat rose under their feet. What do you mean? The fruit of their land. Look, look at Pastor Eric. There was fruit and vegetation in that land that was growing out of the ground. Some of you are looking for a miracle this way and the miracle's growing between your feet. Because there was a season when God let it rain down. Now there's a season when God's growing it up. Woo! The early rain produces the root. The latter rain brings the shoot. Or the fruit. In October, they plant the wheat. In March and April, they thresh it out. Bread time. I want to close with this. The most important wafer I can give you right here. Well, I heard everything you said. I appreciate it, but I'm, I'm just not hungry. Doesn't really matter to me. I'm, I'm good, copacetic, life's good. Well, wonderful. 
How many of you, like me, have ever looked at God and God quickened you about something and said, God, I, I shamefully, I, I don't want to. You ever had the Holy Spirit say, you need to pray, and you said, I, I would pray, but I don't feel like praying. Have you ever been so convicted at the lack of your hunger level? Whew. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and it kind of bothered you like, man, I, I'm getting so cold or just something's got to change in me. Why do I feel this way? Have you ever looked back and thought, man, in that season you were going after God and you were on fire and now you can't start a fire with dry wood and a box of gasoline. You can't find fire. Has anybody else experienced those seasons? No? 30%, 80 90 100 we In one season, man, I, whoo, praise God. I mean, you're, you're on the beach of heaven. And the next season you're like, man, uh, you can't find it. Listen to me. This is my whole message today right here. God, make me hungry again. There is hunger games through the entire Bible. Wait, Genesis 3. Did God tell you you couldn't eat from any tree? Hunger. Let's go to Genesis 25. I'm starving. Oh, Esau, I got some soup. Well, what good is my birthright now? I faint. Boy, you'll sell your soul for a cheap bowl of the world's soup if you don't know who you are. Hunger caused Esau to sell his birthright. We can just keep going through Scripture, can't we? Wow. On and on. Just keep going. Human hunger will drive you to God or to take you to hell. I want to close with this. I used to know this as a fact. I, I, don't, I don't know what it actually is now. I didn't look at, look at it last night, but I used to know the actual stats of it, but you, may, you probably know. I'm sure if you're watching online, you can get this in five seconds. They say it takes 21 days, right? A good month probably to break a habit. You've heard that? Or to change your, you know, and that, that sounds good, and it may be true. I, I don't know. I'm certainly not disagreeing with it. But for me, I've, I've been like Daniel. I've waited 21 days and nothing happened. I didn't want it. I wanted it more. <laughs> Give me the number 8, please, and a number 9. Put a number 10 in there, too. Watch. Just depriving yourself of something doesn't make you not desire. Oh, well, if you starve it long enough, it'll die. Hmm. I got a friend of mine. He's 90. I asked him, I said, when does a man stop desiring a woman? He said, you have to ask somebody older than me. <laughs> Ain't got no teeth. Come on, y'all. Okay, his ears are longer than his head. He's round in third base, y'all. 90 years old. Scared me. Wow. But, but look at me. Here's what scares me. Good enough. Oh, God. Go over there so lightning don't hit both of us. Y'all forget, would you, can I ask you right now up front to please forgive me? I can't do it. 
I cannot do good enough. I can't do it. Not when God has blessed me with a home that's worth $250, I owe $160. i am going to cut the grass. <laughs> Not when God's given you a vehicle to drive. I'm going to put gas. I'm going to even change oil in it. Right. I'm going to even change it myself in my yard. Why? Because I have a responsibility, you ready? To steward the blessing of manna God has given me. If I want the promised land, if I want better in God, I've got to be obedient in God. If I want to reach beyond where I am, you ready? I've got to see beyond where I am. So gentlemen, men, me, I'm a man. I ought to whoop you, preacher. I'm a man. Well, if, 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 we're, if we're men, don't tell me this is good enough where you are. I used to really subtly think, no, no, rather hope real quietly in my spirit. Watch, watch, watch every man in this room lie right here. Watch. Watch this lie fly. I used to think in my spirit, you know, one day she'll, she'll just give me grace. She loves me so much. She don't need an air conditioner. She loves me. And she promised, I mean, we've been together so long, she can drive a Ford Pinto. Don't matter. Pedal it with your foot. It'll go. But all the ladies said amen when I say, fellas, she don't want bread from yesteryear. She... Uh, the women in the 21st century, they like a man that's got a great job. Oh, y'all are so weak today. I hope you're watching online. Please pull out your credit card and pending credit approval. You can join the church. I'm telling you, fellas, they want a man that'll fix the problem. Not bring the problem. Women, oh, wait, wait, y'all ready? Employers, raise your hand if you got a job. Raise your hand if you got a job. Raise it high. All right. If the employers are looking for humans that go beyond the required, well, I did it. And I promise you, as an employer myself, when people see other humans who've got that drive, there, I talked to a man yesterday. He said, you cannot find good workforce. It's dead. You know why? We've accepted good enough. I don't want to leave my kids debt. I don't want to leave my children. That's good enough, son. My God. I tell my boys, and it ain't going to change. I'm, I'm, I repent. I'm sorry. I got kids, and they'll say, oh, well, Daddy, I couldn't. Go back out there. Come on. Can I get any parent to say amen? Come on, we're going back out there. Come on, we're going back out there. Come on. All right, pick it up. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, it's 90% God will do it. Did you hear me? It's not human zeal. Oh God, we got to grow the church. We got to grow the church. We got to grow the church. It ain't going to grow like that. 90% of a church growing is you doing the 10%. Literally. Do you know how a church grows? Just occasionally if you bring somebody that's just as equal a heathen as we are. You don't have to find one of them sinners. You a sinner too. Saved by grace. You're a saint who used to be entitled a sinner. Now you're a saint saved by grace. Huh. Isn't that magical? My, my father-in-law, they, they bought this property, they renovated it, like a couple millions of dollars. They brought in, y'all ready? And, and we were almost going to do it. A man in this church said, you need to do this, you need to, it's the best way. So we brought in a financial consultant. 
You know what they do? Y'all ready? They raise a lot, they raise a moderate amount of money, then they take a moderate amount of money and leave you with the rest. Come on, y'all, help me preach. Well, see, my grandma called that a scam. Now it's biscuits and ham, but it used to be a scam. When if God's people are in it, God's people can do it. I'm not saying we don't need wisdom. Here's what I am saying. 90% of great comes from you just being obedient in the good. Just in the good. In the good season of manna, just go get the manna. Go out there and get that manna and stack it up and bring it back in the house. Eat on it. Work it. Work it. You'll be shocked at what God will move forward in your life if you'll take one step. But we're living, I'm quitting, we're living in dangerous times where men want great, but they want to give good. High expectations, low input. Woo! I told a man recently, he said, I, you know, I just, I just want blah, 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 and I just, I just want to, you know, he was all broke up about it. I just want to, <coughs> he kept naming, I just, you know, just for me and my family, I just want X, Y, Z. I just, I just want, you know, and for, for me and my family, I just, I just want to, I just want to, you know, make more. And I just want to, and he just kept going. And, and he finished. I said, man, you know what? I said, you know what? He said, what? I said, I want to be a rock star. <laughs> he said, what? I said, hang on a second. I want, I think, I feel, I need. Blessed are those whew, that hunger and thirst. You ready? After righteousness. Oh, you're thinking righteousness. This Wait, wait, wait. Righteousness is the right thing. And when God's given you gold, so to speak, don't you bring in duct tape and claim the will of God. Amen? If God's told you you're going to own a house, walk around that house saying, God, I thank you that you've enabled me to own this home. You've enabled me to purchase this property. And I'm going to work toward my faith. And my faith is going to work toward me. If faith and hope are not married, it won't work. Faith, works, and hope have to get married. Come on, y'all. Legs on the faith are better. One foot in front of the other. Wait, wait, listen to me, listen to me. God will move where there is the faith to claim that land. But here, I can't prove it, but here's what the Lord showed me. Here's what I, I feel like. And I preached this about three years ago, this thought right here. God, change me. I'm not hungry. So you quit X, Y, Z because you're going to starve that dog to death till he runs to somebody else's house. But the devil will send you another dog to feed. It's not like you just starve it all the time. Watch. So you go to the doctor and you say these words. Oh, I'm just I've been sick. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me, doctor. Uh, doctor Money. And uh, I'm, I'm just so sick, Dr. Money. And <clears throat> I've just been feeling this, whatever. So he says, okay, stand up. Say, ah, and stick out your tongue. Because he's about to look on the back of your tongue and your throat, and he's going to tell you the direction of what's right and wrong with you. Because it starts right there. So instead of me praying this, God... Take away my desire to sleep in in the mornings. I need to pray. Your body's going to say, that ain't happening. <laughs> never going to happen. My body has never at four in the morning said, Holy Ghost prayer time. La, 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 la. Never has happened. And I have to force myself, don't I? Force myself, get in that prayer closet. But in that prayer closet is where the honey flows. Watch. So I have to pray this and I close. God, come on. 
scrape off my taste buds. Oh, give me, give me some of that. Oh, give me, give me some. Oh, oh, oh my God. It burned the end of your tongue off. Don't worry. Because in three days, you can have your latte again. <laughs> Here's how God heals us. You ready? He scrapes off your taste buds and gives you new ones. This is, watch, this is a church or a family right here. We don't like the promised land. The oranges are too big and the apples are sour and the bread's too salty. We, either, we, want, we want the wilderness or Egypt. That's your choices. Well, in Egypt, you're in bondage. Having fun going to hell. In the wilderness, you're not in the will of God, but you're getting fed. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. In the promised land, I'm telling you the beef steaks cut themselves with a butter knife. I'm telling you the, the, the gravy is full of oil and you don't get fat. I'm telling you in the promised land, there's fruit, there's honey, there's milk, there's everything you need. So, here's my altar call, my prayer, my desire. Lord, I'm not asking, I'm praying a dangerous prayer this week. Lord, change my taste buds. Does anybody else feel like you need that word from God right there? Whew. Change my hunger. And, but pastor, I'm not willing. Don't worry. Say, God, I'm not willing. Make me willing. <laughs> I'm willing that you make me willing. I want to make a confession to you. Um... We've been married 14 years, Lindsay and I. We went through a season recently in our marriage where we sat down at a table and we said, hey, are you, you into me? We were like, looking at each other kind of like, sort of. We're all the real married people at. Do you, are, you, do you, are you still attracted to me? We both were like, It's getting quiet in this Methodist funeral home. <laughs> so we had to kind of evaluate and reevaluate what's love got to do? But through that scriptural Changing and navigation. Come on. We found the sweet spot. You don't give up when the hunger dies. Because remember yesterday at the barbecue joint? You was real hungry. But now you're not. Watch. But you didn't go burn that joint down. Do you know why? Because you're going to get hungry again. And you're going to think in your mind, man, remember that barbecue we had? I'm craving that barbecue. People will drive 90 miles to eat hogs. Hey, y'all. Won't drive 10 miles to worship God. We going down there that smoking pig, son, in Valdosta. Woo! Drove 90 miles. Got a ticket. You didn't care? Come on, y'all. Got to get that cholesterol. Find the hunger. Can you witness with me? Hey, does it, does it come and go? Life, marriage, God. You ever prayed like this? Father, I praise you. <coughs> and thank you. Amen. 
God will do the 90 if you'll do the 10. Yesterday, I went on the circle. I was praying at my house. I did three laps praying. I got back home. All the kids, Daddy, all over me. I'm like, quit. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to be spiritual. So I went, watch, I went. <laughs> Didn't work. I sat down a few minutes, put a little music on. Father, I just thank you. Give me, I, I want something fresh for me and the people. And it's Saturday, so I need it by tomorrow morning, too, if you can do that, too. Um, and as God is my witness, uh, Daddy, Daddy, what, what, what is it? Uh, I'm hungry. Okay, all right, okay, all right, hold on. Daddy, Daddy, Jude said we could have some cinnamon toast crud. Okay, yeah, just eat, 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 eat it all. Eat whatever. Just eat the kitchen. And I was like, oh, God. So an hour goes by. I ain't got no bread. I'm, I'm looking for bread for me. Oh, don't, 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 don't patronize yourself. I wasn't trying to get bread for y'all. I'm hungry. I needed this. So I ran out of the house quietly. Nobody knew I was gone. I said, I'm not going back in the house until I get the presence of God. And my, I feel you, Lord. So I'm on the loop and I'm praying. Now, my first three loops was, Lord, you're, you're my shepherd. I shall not want to. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. You're rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy, follow me all the days of my life. <sighs> I was done. That fourth lap, Father God, I thank you that you are Jehovah. I'm going to walk this circle till you walk it with me, Jesus. And about that, about not even a full lap, the Lord said, you're going to preach on the man and the fruit. You're going to call it hunger seasons, hunger games. And you're going to talk about reigniting your hunger for me. Literally, it was like I stopped in my mailbox. How many know what I'm talking about? You know when God speaks to you, don't you? I stopped in the middle of the road. My, my neighbor pulls up Miss Jean. She's 85. She said, are you all right? I never see you walking. I only see you running. I said, I'm fine. Pray, I'm running on the inside. Hallelujah. And it came clear. Why? Because the first three laps, I wasn't hungry. The fourth lap, I said, God, I'm hungry. I've got to. And you'll be shocked at what low enthusiasm will cost you a high price. When you get a little bit passionate about it, though, Faith begins to stir. Come on, y'all. I said when you get passionate about it and faith begins to stir and now you're attracting God and God sits down in the presence of whatever you're going through because now he senses hunger. Stand on your feet with me. Raise your hand if you can identify with this today. Come on. Whew. How many uh, have been through a season before where the bread was at the fo foots of your bed and it was wonderful? And you ever, Anybody ever been through a good season? Come on, be honest. Your air conditioner works. Everything's going good. Hallelujah. But you know what? The man is going to stop falling, isn't it? Yep. And you're going to be in another season. Can't eat that old food in a new season. <laughs> How many of you have ever met somebody like this? I'm just not growing spiritually. I'll tell you why. Because you're still eating, but you're, not, you're eating the old spiritual bread. You need to start eating fresh spiritual bread and watch your body respond. Amen? This altar call is only for people who will say, Lord, I need you to ignite a new hunger in me for you, God. God, cause my hunger level for you 
to rise high. I'm going to be the first one on the altar. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Any faith people, any hungry people. I got to get my hunger back, man. I, I'm, I'm not running. I got to get my hunger back. Got to get my hunger back. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. When you get here, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Got to get our hunger back, don't we? Oh. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Got to get hungry again. Scrape those taste buds off again. Let God scrape your taste buds clean. It'll burn at first, but it'll heal too. You'll be hungry again. If you've been in a drought or a famine or a storm, it's time to get hungry again. Woo! Turn that up if you will. Let's lift our hands. Oh, we worship you, Lord. And I can't contain, and I can't control. of victory calls me to be like Bartimaeus and push through a crowd or a woman with an issue of blood to press through until my flow is stopped create in me God a hungry heart a hungry heart blessed are those that hunger blessed are those that hunger they shall be filled Come on, hands lifted high Father, I pray for hunger levels to change today. Hallelujah. God, I believe Babasata. Hunger levels to change in Jesus' name. Hungry. Hungry in Jesus' name. I'm hungry, Lord, for more of you, less of me. Every problem I have is solved in the hunger chamber. If I'm hungry for God, things will be solved. God will fix what ails me. God will solve what problems I'm having. God will move on my behalf. Oh. 
Lord, awaken a hunger in this marriage, a hunger in this home, a hunger in this family, a hunger in these children. Hallelujah. Hungry, Lord, hungry hearts, hungry hearts today, Lord. In Jesus' name, a hungry heart, oh God, today. Father, a hungry heart, hungry for, hungry to see my family saved, hungry to see my family saved. Here in your love, here in your love, with my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. If you've been settling, raise your hands. Come on, if you've been settling and just kind of living, if you've been settling, don't settle. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Just bring it, bring it down a little bit. Look at me. I believe that African American people can run businesses. I believe that English, European, white people can run businesses. I believe that Spanish people can run businesses. I believe that if God has called you to something great, that the devil's going to do everything in his power to prevent you from getting to that promised land. Listen to me. Why? It's not that you die and go to hell if you don't reach the promise. You can die in the wilderness and go to heaven. You can die in that wilderness, saved and go to heaven. Here's, what's, here's the problem. I believe with all of my heart, with everything that's in me, that God is going to bring extreme great wealth into my life. Let me tell you why. So that I can distribute to others. My biggest heart, I'm married to her. She, she can vouch to this, for this. My biggest heartache is I see other people in similar situations I'm in. Not bad. Just good people that need somebody to sort of push them along a little. I see white people like that. I see black people like that. I see, brown, I see all kind of people like that. So my heart is I say, hi, look at all, look at all these, boy, I'm, 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 I'm Kenny Rogers, boy, I'm like, I'm loaded with his money. My heart is God bring, and you know, and God has showed me how he's going to do it, hasn't he? He, sh he showed Lindsay, and I, here's how I'm going to, I've given you the key to, for, 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 I'm going to say a dirty word, for prosperity. I've given you, this is how you're going to prosper, not through the church growing, but I've given you a key. Here it is, personally. It's how God's going to bless you. The same type of thing. You have a job. You go to work. God's give, showed me the way. So that my heart is, honey, we, we did five college scholarships this year for kids that wouldn't have went to college. Then we helped. We gave 5000 to this couple who was buying a home. Then we bought this lady a car, a good, really nice used car. That's my heart. I, I, I'm not saying, oh God, I want to count. I, I want to get it to people. That's, that's a dream of mine to say, honey, you know that woman that you counseled who lost her baby? Let's, um, let's, 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 let's send them an envelope with you know $1,000 uh, and let them go to Disney. What's wrong with that? Some of you like, give it to me. It's only wrong when it's somebody else, isn't it? That, that's our heart, man. I, I, I want to own several homes. So I say, man, don't go down there and give your money to them. Go stay in that house that, that Lindsay owns <laughs> for free. Wouldn't that be incredible? How much of the world has our money? <laughs> Rolling in it. They're not in this church. They are in any other church. Living it up. Because Jesus said the children of darkness are wiser in their time than the children of light. I believe that God has an economy that's first spiritual. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things, other things, other things, other things, other things. He didn't say things were bad. He didn't say things were wrong. He said, seek first my kingdom. Ready? And all these other things, they'll be added unto you. Watch. They'll come to you instead of you constantly... Raise your hand if you have struggled in your life, even recently or days gone by, to just make ends meet. Raise your hand. 
All right? Can't be always God's will, can it? That it's just constantly, just beat down constantly. That so much so that when you get to green grass, to lay down in green grass, you go, where am I? Where, where am I? Is there a septic tank under this? How many has been in that season? You can't even recognize the blessing because you've been in such a cursed wilderness. So it all begins with God changing our hunger. We're in an area, let's just admit, where it's easy. <sighs> to go to sleep. Somebody's watching us from the beach this morning. <laughs> Heathens. <laughs> Summertime. I'll be back, Pastor Eric, in September. It's okay, send you tithe online. <laughs> you ain't got no excuse no more. Let's pray this prayer. If, if you're willing, yesterday I said, God, I, I, I don't want to. I, 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 I'm just being honest. I don't want to pray most times. And then the Lord said, that's okay. Ask me to change your want to. This is my marriage in a nutshell. Five out of ten times, nine out of ten, I know I'm wrong, but I don't want to apologize to her again. She gets leverage. How many been there? You know, and, and so we had that conversation, and since then, man, that honesty has breeded bad language. Uh, that honesty has uh, brought forth a newfound hunger for each other. Amen? The world will say lie about it and cover it up. God will say deal with it and put it on the table and go forward. Amen? Pray this prayer with me. God, in my heart, if there's areas of unwillingness, break those. I'm asking you for a strong desire, for a strong appetite for you and the things of heaven. The things of God change my hunger. I've perhaps been cold and indifferent, but I'm desiring change. Make me hungry again for you, Lord, for you, Jesus, for you, Holy Spirit. And convict me when I'm full. Thank you, Lord. You believe that God will seal that prayer in your heart? I do. You believe God will seal that? Now, now God's the one that put <clears throat> the value on the words we say, not I, right? I mean, God's the one told Moses, declare this from the, from the mountaintop. What we say does matter. It doesn't work like you can say, 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 say carnival and a cruise ship will show up. But it does mean as you speak, so it be it unto you, as your faith is. Faith speaks before it moves. Faith moves while it speaks. you got to be in action there. Faith, hope, and works all go together. i got faith. Well, faith without works is dead. i got faith, but you don't have any hope. It won't come to pass. It's easier to heal a broken leg than a broken heart. Because when people lose hope, they lose faith. I've lost hope. I'm dying. Don't, don't lose hope or you'll lose faith. There's a woman in our neighborhood right now. I don't know exactly what's medically wrong with Patty. We, there's kind of, it's kind of top secret, I think, but... She, she's already basically said, you know, I'm, I'm... And I thought to myself, even if you physically that's the diagnosis, don't ever come into agreement with, I'm dying. I'll, I'll be dead soon. Never. Hey, fight the wave and, you know, fight it. Stand up and say, by faith. Now, I know there's a time to pass, but talk to Lazarus about that. Talk to him about that. So don't check out until God says it's your checking out time. Get the full allotment of life. Go all the way into the promising. promising. Be 90 if you want to. Be 100. Walk in faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many believe this was a word for you? Raise your hand. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Say it with me. I am whole and I am healed and I am prosperous. It's Mr. Mac's birthday. Mr. Mac, stand up. Everybody say happy birthday. We love that guy right there. Happy birthday, Mr. Mac.
We love you. We bless you. Don't forget VBS set up. See Miss Incia. Is she in here? Somebody give me a representative of Creative Kids and let's get VBS set up. Anything else? Meeting. There's a quick VBS meeting and then we'll get set up. We love you. No prayer tonight. VBS is all.